how does this fit in to this overall process of healing? And part of it is top-down driven. So as I've been studying aging for 40 years now, I realize that we have all these different theories of aging, and they can basically be stratified, where we're talking about you know, low-level systems like free radicals and uh, antioxidant balance, and we can talk about redox potential, we can talk about um, hydration, we can talk about metabolic as very, very low-level systems, uh, the my mitochondrial aging that would then uh, be a risk factor for um, premature death or the overconsumption of polyunsaturated fatty acids that would it dramatically increase your risk of some kind of sudden death problem or cancer, for example. Um, and but on the top down level, you have the neuroendocrine aging mechanisms that are all about how a particular stress is perceived. Is the stress empowering? Does it make, it, make us stronger? Or does it break us down? So, for example, learn helplessness would be a perfect example of this. If you, uh, you're a scientist you're in the lab and you have this big, huge leather glove so that you can grab rats without getting bit. So you reach into the cage and you grab a rat and you clench it in this glove and the rat struggles. If you allow the rat to go, let the rat go before it stops struggling. That empowers the rat that their struggling activity has now resulted in their escape, and that rat will live to an almost old age. There will be a life shortening effect, but it will be small. But if you hold onto that rat long enough until he stops struggling, that rat will die very young. So it's basically the same stress. 